sweaty. I tried to start with <laughs> hello instead of good morning, and it messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> we can't We're get never going to be able to get this right. Anything. I'm going to have Shayla do the There's, next Yeah, one. you should. Because then it's going to show how bad I am and we're not ready for that. I think okay. everybody expects the front end just to be like <laughs> uh, right. awkward. It's I just going to be awkward. It's because the good morning, welcome to Life Beyond Sunday was working well. And then you're like, what if they're not listening in the morning? And then, okay, anyways. Hi, guys. Um, welcome to season three of Life Beyond Sunday. Um, and today we are talking about, well, this season we've been talking about leadership. Yep. Um, which is a topic you guys both lo yes, love. Yes. Uh, I love it too. Anything business related mm. leadership. We were actually just talking about business right before we started. <laughs> I love those things. Um, and so, but it's not just if you're in the workplace, right? Yep. Um, a lot of us manage our homes yep. and, um, that is a huge leadership yes. role. And yep. so don't tune out because I think that all, all relationship here, I mean, all uh, content here is yeah. relevant no matter yeah. what your role yeah. is. Um, so today we're going to be talking about something um, that I find very difficult to, I think it's an easy concept to talk about, but sometimes it's difficult to implement. Yeah. And it is time management. Everybody's find, tuning out. Now. Yeah, I know. They're gone. They're like, I don't know. Nope, nope. Later. Don't want to talk <laughs> <Yeah>. about that. <laughs> but you two are very, I, I look at you two and I think you guys are actually very highly effective, um, people, mm -hmm. um, that, do manage your time well. And I think you can take on a large workload yeah. from what I see yeah. from the outside. Yeah. Um, so smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. <laughs> yeah, right. It's really our Perception staff that is, is doing reality. all the work. No. no, I'm just kidding. Um, but you guys are really good at that. And so today I'm going to just ask a few questions about what y'all do um, in t to manage your time. Okay. Right? Okay. So there are some specific time management techniques <laughs> I'm going to mention a few of them and then I'm going to ask you guys a question. So there's the, I'll, I'll tell you what they are and I'll explain what they are. There's like the Pomodoro technique, which is basically you put your, Shayla's like, oh, I'm interested. Hmm, so that means she doesn't use that it. one. Um, basically you take your day and you put it in 25 minute blocks. Okay. Every 25 minutes you take a small break. After four breaks, you take a longer one, which is like your lunch time or something. Okay. And you focus on a specific task. The other one is the time blocking, which I'm, I don't know if you guys have heard about, but basically it's like, hey, I come into work from mm -hmm. eight to nine. I look mm -hmm. at emails from mm -hmm. nine to 1030. I, I, you know, I, I make phone calls out yeah. from 1030, you know, whatever. Or in my home, I wake up. This is my breakfast time. This is the time that I do my Devo. Now, every day I do laundry from this time. Every yeah. day I make prep, meal prep at this time. So that's basically the time blocking technique. And then there's the eat the frog method or the big three. They're kind of a mix of the two, which is like you write down your tasks for that day and you basically you eat the nastiest frog first. So the biggest thing, you kind of get it out of the way. So those are a couple of the more popular ones. There's like a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So do you use any of them? <laughs> No, <laughs> I would say um, in some sense, I use some of the time blocking aspects, yeah. um, but not fully. So I read a book a few years back called Deep Work, and it talked about how every person has a four hour period of time where they are the most creative, yeah. effective, you know, they're going to get the most done. And so what I did is I realized that mine was early in the morning, mm -hmm. which is partly why I'm an early riser. It's because that's my most effective time. So I try to maximize that time to do the things that only I can do that I have to get done, like message prep. You know, I, I don't know if our audience realizes this or not, but Sunday comes every week. So <laughs> Really? I had yeah, no yeah, idea. It's, it's this crazy thing. After you, after you get through Sunday, like that week starts all back over. And so there's an expectation you got to have something there. So I realized that probably from about 7 to 11, AM and maybe even six to 10 is like my most effective period. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm going to be the most creative. I'm going to have the best ideas. I'm going to be the most focused. Mm -hmm. And so I make sure that the most important tasks that I have to accomplish personally that week, I put those tasks within that period of time and then everything else kind of gets scheduled around that. Mm -hmm. So okay. meetings with people, events, what all the other things, not that meeting with people isn't important, but for the things that I have to accomplish, mm -hmm. that goes in that period of time. And how do you, is, do you use a similar? I'm, I'm very similar. Is that like, how you plan I get my day? best work done, my most creative work done in the morning. So I'm typically not scheduling a bunch of stuff in the morning. And I, I'm really like, I block stuff out of my, my calendar. Like if I need to get 
something done, but I'm really honestly a procrastinator. So, yeah, I, I it's funny because you don't strike me as a procrastinator. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you, how do you procrastinate and stay effective? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a procrastinator too. Yeah. I, 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 we, uh, like I have to give myself a deadline mm -hmm. yep. um, and actually share that deadline yep. with somebody yep. or else I will sit on that project yep. forever. So um, in my workplace where I was looking at something of a commissional a commission restructuring yeah. for whatever. Um, and I was, I've been sitting on this for like a month and mm -hmm. a half now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I have to just finish this. It doesn't mm -hmm. take that long. So I went and I scheduled a meeting with somebody yep. about it. I yep. said, hey, I, I, I always will be ready mm -hmm. on whatever day to yep. have this discussion yep. with you. Smart. Because if I don't do that, I yep. will sit yep. in that project yep. because nobody knows I'm doing it. Yep. Yeah. Nobody's asked me for it. So yep. I can literally It's like putting it. things in your schedule in order to hold yourself accountable. And other people don't really know that you're doing that, but... Yeah. You know, but I think part of that for us is as an organization, we run a, a management structure called traction it and we have a meeting every Monday with mm -hmm. our executive team called an L10 meeting and every 90 days we set big rocks yeah. like here are things that we have to accomplish and every one of us at that table has to give an update every have week. to give an update every week on how we're doing on our rocks and where we're at and are we on schedule and mm -hmm. are we going to accomplish it mm -hmm. and if we're not then all of a sudden it becomes an issue that everybody begins to talk about and so like there's a like there's in a, a good way, in a yeah. good way. Like, oh my gosh TJ didn't get a yeah. rock done <laughs> but it 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 creates like I don't want to show up to that meeting and not be progressing or not be accomplished because then all of my peers are going to look at me and go, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why are you slacking? Yeah. And so I, th I, I think that that's helpful for us in accomplish. In fact, since we implemented that, I feel like we've accomplished so much more individually, organizationally. You're just moving stuff forward. We're moving stuff forward all the time. And it brings an accountability aspect yep. that's helpful for time management. Well, and I think the, the big thing is knowing yourself and how you operate and then putting things in place that can allow you to be the most successful, you know, possible, whether it's at home, whether it's in your job, you know, like at home sometimes, like I'm not, I, I don't, I'm going to procrastinate on cleaning up or any of those things. So sometimes like, let's invite people over. So I have to clean the house, you know, like, she's like, let's have people over for dinner. And that way I have to clean. Exactly. But Hey, you hey, know it yourself. Works. If it works, it works. Do you, do you think that, um, it's, you know, some people, you said you identified that your creativity or your productivity is in the morning. Mm -hmm. You have the same time. Yeah. Do you think that there's people that are more creative in at night? Yeah. Absolutely. And do you think that that's troublesome? There, there are, but it's, if you were to read the book, very few people are. I, what happens for most people is they, because they procrastinated, they end up becoming night owls and mm -hmm. they end up actually messing up circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the majority, I think it was Cal Newport that wrote the book, if just off the top of my head, he said that like probably 80% of people are actually most productive in the morning, but because they've been poorly managing their yeah. time, they're sleeping through their most productive times. Mm. So they're never actually experiencing the most productive they could be because they've mis they've actually mismanaged their time, mm -hmm. and they haven't they haven't set rhythms to their life. And I think part of the reason most people struggle when it comes to time management is they don't have rhythms. Yeah, you know, one night they're have out a till bedtime, half a till three. Like I mean. We've gone to bed twice this week past nine o'clock, which is a rarity for us. Like Shayla actually said it this morning as we were leaving to go work out. She's like, I can't believe you still wake up at the same time every day. Like when we're off schedule. And I said, but that's the only way I get back on schedule. If I just stay on schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I'm just going to mess myself up. And so I think that it's consistency when it comes to your time, if you're consistent with it, all of a sudden it's st time starts working for you instead of against you. Yeah. So right now you, you, you identify a couple of hints so far as you identify your most creative time and you block it out. And so that you make sure that you're getting your most important things done during that time. Mm -hmm. And for most people, 80% of people mm -hmm. that looks like the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing that you mentioned is, um, 
being uh, consistent in your kind of routine, mm-hmm. and we can talk about developing routines on another. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but being just consistent in your in your in your time management. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what are some other things that you guys do to schedule your day or your month or your? What are some other things? Well, that wait. You're why Why don't you tell us what what you do that makes you the most effective? Because you use a a method and a management. Of that your you time. gave me. That is actually, it's it's one of the most effective yeah. management tools so out there. talk to us about it. From Michael Hyatt. Yeah, so this uh, there's actually a funny background story <laughs> to this. Um, because I, Shayla, we met for some, I don't remember what it was. Yeah. And you had this like planner called the Daily Focus, fan, oh, yeah. Yeah. Full, full, full Focus, focus. Full, full Focus, focus planner. planner. And I was like, oh, what is that? And she's like, oh, I've, I started using this full focus planner. And the concept is, and well, I'll, I don't know I'll if I said I started using it. I no, said I, I got, got this. It. I got this. I got this. <laughs> we yeah. have a, we own quite a few yeah, of them actually. I got this or I think you were trying to start using it or something. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm going to go out and buy it. And so I go out and I buy it and I'll explain the concept in a second. But it had been like three weeks in. I'm like, this wait, thing wait, is you amazing. Need to, you need to let them know like when you, it's an investment to do it this. It is an investment. Yeah. When I looked up the planner, I Okay, so first of all, it's quarterly, and it's like fifty bucks, like the yeah. And I was like, dang, I don't know. Um, so, but then I was like, you know what? Let me give it a try because I do need. So, in my line of work, um, the day if I'm not very careful, the day happens yeah. to me. Yeah. Yes, um, which is most people. Yes. So uh, what happens is on a busy day, you know, I'm needed a lot because I have a team under me, and mm-hmm. a lot of our, uh, you know, I manage. I, I we were talking about this. I'm. I'm heavy into the sales, but anything that's commercial, buying and selling. Yeah. And sometimes that's time time sensitive. And so people want to get a hold of you because they're sitting in front it's of the a, urgent over the important. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So um so the day will happen to me. And at that point, I was like, something's happening where I'm getting I'm losing control of my day. Yeah. It's not that I'm not working. But you're not but as I'm productive. Not, I'm not as productive. Yeah. So I went out and bought the planner. Anyways, three weeks later, I I, I messaged Sh- Shayla and I'm like, this thing is amazing. I love it. Thank you so much. And she's like, great. Now you can teach me how to use it. Because she had never actually <laughs> so, so started. So tell, tell the people the concept okay, behind, so the behind concept, Full Focus. Yeah, the concept is you basically, it's, it's, it's the concept of the big three. Mm -hmm. So you basically plan out your quarter in three major goals or six major goals. And then you break those down by week and by day. Mm -hmm. So every day when I start, I have a, I have a, what essentially it's a glorified to-do list. It's a Mm -hmm. to-do list, but the top three most important projects that I need to finish are at the top. Yep. And at the bottom is everything else. Yep. And so my goal during that day is to finish those top three. And that, and I've learned to use it better and better as we go on. Mm-hmm. So like the more specific something is. Yep. So I used to put like, start whatever project. Right. What does start that project right. mean? Right? right. Does it mean open the Excel sheet? Does it mean? Yeah. So now I actually write out like, build out the concept for this mm-hmm. and da, 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 da. And that's yeah. like on my big three. And so I start, at, I either do it the first thing in the morning where mm-hmm. I separate my day or I do it the day before. Yep. So I go in and I know exactly that, it, hey, if my day is, if I finish these three things, I'm good. And a lot of people think that sounds restraining, but it's actually very freeing because if I finish those three things by two o'clock. Yep. And you just crushed the day. Hey, I just, I just, yep. I feel like I was a success story that day. Mm-hmm. And now, you know what? I'm allowed to just be available for people. Right. I don't have to take on a different project that day. So yep. it's actually been, and I, and sometimes I will, don't get me wrong, but it's actually been very freeing to me um, to be able to say like, okay, now I'm going to take this concept of the big three and mm-hmm. separate it. And, and, and essentially if you use the whole thing, um, the idea is you also have these big three quarterly goals yeah. or these big yeah. weekly goals that you're trying to finish. And so you can look at, hey, this is my goal for the week. And you can make sure that you're making progress throughout the week to finish that Well, and I think goal. this is extremely powerful, Kelly, because I think most most people do not live with intention. That's right. Like the years are passing, months are passing, days are passing. And we look back and you're like, what did I do yesterday? What did I like? Very few people live intentionally. And I think when we live intentionally, there's something super powerful about that because we're intentional in relationships, we're intentional in what we accomplish in our own personal life, in our organizations, but very few people sit down and go, what is my goal, whether it's quarterly, monthly, annually, and how am I going to get there? And what you're talking about right now and using this, I mean, and you don't have to have the tool to do that. Anybody can go, hey, 
here's my yearly goals. Let's break it down by quarter. And then how every day am I moving towards accomplishing that mm-hmm. goal? If we all lived like that, whether it's in our family, our organization, in relationships, like we would see ourselves accomplish so much mm-hmm. and have such a rich and fulfilling life no matter what we do. Yeah. But I think very few people think intentionally about their day, their weeks, their months, their quarter, their year. And then before long, it just goes by and you're just like, what have I done? Yeah, and you don't you know? even notice it's going You by. don't. Yeah. And so I think really this is a pow- kind of a powerful conversation for people out there that haven't really been intentional or thought about like, what what is the picture mm-hmm. right that I want for my life and what am I doing to 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 get there? Yeah. Um and I and I wanna just like to say about your fam you said like even for your family, mm-hmm. you know, one yeah. thing that I noticed in my home was that I needed to spend more and sometimes I drop the ball on this, but mm-hmm. I need to spend more individual time with my girls. Yeah. Like separate them and spend Mm -hmm. time with them Mm -hmm. and I noticed that that was a need Mm -hmm. that our family had Mm -hmm. um and so like that I've been more intentional about even planning that yeah so like Sunday I I went went alone with my youngest Mm -hmm. to the mall Mm -hmm. and we went Mm -hmm. and we bought our clothes for the summer and then the yesterday I volunteered at my oldest Mm -hmm. classroom end of the year or or her one of her things at school and so that was like, that's, and mm-hmm. planning that, if I don't plan yep. that out, yep. it won't happen it won't in happen. my day. Right? That's right. Um, so this, this isn't just a tool and you're right. This is a one way to do it. Um, but I do think that if you, de- to develop some kind of method is mm-hmm. important because if you don't put it on paper, if you don't, oh, it's just floating around yep. in your mind. It's How never going to happen. You're going to, you know, complete it. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so that's what I use. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's been very helpful for me. And the other thing that I do for that is all my notes that I take. So my big three is on one side, it's a notebook on the other side of the page. That's where I write down my notes for the day. Mm -hmm. And so even if I get lost in my, like, like it's forcing me, why do I do that? Because it's actually forcing me to look at those things all the time. Mm -hmm. If I had a separate notebook, I probably, I could go without opening them. Yeah. So there's little tricks that put things in front of you every day. Mm -hmm. Um, There's even sticky notes. Mm -hmm. Have you seen like, yeah, they have like little sticky notes Mm -hmm. that you can put on their desk. So, so what are other ways that you guys plan your day? (laughs) (laughs) Calendar scheduling? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, at, at this point in my life, you know, besides my, my time that I need to study our EA plans kind of the rest of my day, uh-huh. you know, and, and that's EA and, is executive assistant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, if people need to meet, if there's meetings I need to be a part of that, I'm invited, like she kind of dictates a lot of that, uh, for my life. But the, the big chunk that I get, that's the most important. That's, those are the things that I have to do. And then if I need other time, I block that out. Like I can block out them, but for the majority of my calendar, like yeah, she, everything is she, calendar driven. Yeah, yeah. Everything is calendar driven. Like I live, if you're not utilizing your calendar, you're not being effective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you if your calendar is not, I mean, it tells me what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. And so I think that that's a key element. Right. And then you just being knowing what, where are the times that you need to, for whatever tasks you need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, you know, being a procrastinator, I've had to find tools that help me do do stuff when I don't want to do stuff, right? And many years ago, so John Maxwell wrote a book called Intentional Living. Mm -hmm. And it's a phenomenal book. So if you haven't read it, go read it. Um, I think it was in that book, he told a story about somebody that was a procrastinator. And he said, here's what I want you to do before you like for the next 30 days, every time you, before you get in bed, I want you to repeat the phrase, do it now 50 times before you go to sleep. So you're just sitting in bed, do it now, 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 50 times. Then when you get up, I want you to repeat the phrase 50 times, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now for 30 days. 
And so what happens is do it now starts ringing in your head. So when there's something that you need to do, you just kind of start saying, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now. Mm -hmm. And that really helped, honestly, me, even in the, in the little things, it's like, we were talking before the the podcast, you're like, if it takes me five minutes, I'm going to do it now rather than, than putting it off. Or try. (laughs) (laughs) Trying is lying. Yeah. I I said it and then I was like, dang, I walked into that one. (laughs) That's her pet peeve. If you guys don't know, try, like the word try, I'm going to try is Shayla's pet peeve. Don't yeah, say don't it ever to me. say it don't as say it. her spouse. No. Yeah. Right. No. Because, because try, try. Like if you really legitimately try, you can do it. Yes. I. We just use try as, okay. Um, I it's because I, yeah. Okay. Because I, 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 I mean, because you don't always do something. Huh? But yes, I know. Like, for example, I try, if I ask myself, if this is going to take less than five minutes, I'm going to do it now. Right. And then I said, I'm going to try. But it's because sometimes I fall short of doing it. <laughs> but if you really tried, you could okay, do it. That's another, this is another podcast. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I, that five minute thing, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw, can I, can I tell the AirPod story? You knew this was coming, right? You knew it was coming. Okay. My husband's here on the switcher today. Um, and y- you know, <laughs> I always, I tell him like, Oh, ask yourself if something takes less than five minutes being married to me, by the way, this man's a saint. Thank you so much. Honored to wear honor. We, we do dude. agree with that. Yes, he is yes. very much a saint. Um, he's amazing. Um, but, but he will ask, I, I told, I tell him like, if something takes you less than five minutes, then try and do it. Not try. Then do it now. Yes. Um, right. So the other day we were, we were, we were talking and he's like, are you going to do laundry today? And I was like, no, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And he said, okay, because my AirPods are in the, in the, in the thing, in my, in my, in my shorts. Like, I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. So tomorrow I go do laundry, right? Because I said I was going to do it tomorrow. So I did it mm-hmm. tomorrow. And all of a sudden I hear this thing in the machine. We're having dinner and I hear it. And I'm like, what is that sound? And he's like, um, they might be my AirPods. And I was like, you left them there? And he's like, yeah, I just figured I would take them out later. I'm like, if you would, why would you do that? Do it now. It takes five minutes to go find the shorts, pull the thing out. So now I don't even, are they even working? You don't know? Okay. So anyways, my point is, side tangent to the story. I'm like, sorry, I'm calling out my husband on this. There's got to be some biblical thing that says this is wrong. But, um, <laughs> but I think my point is like, if something takes you less than five minutes, yes. why would you... Do it, Push now, it do off it now, to do later. It now, do 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 it now. That's yep. a g- very good yep. strategy. Yep. I think there's a video of you doing that, yes. by the yeah, way, there was somewhere. A, there was a TikTok that went viral of her. Like, Not viral. Oh, it went oh, viral. It, I remember seeing this all over the place. It was hundreds of thousands of views of you like, do it now, do it now. Like oh with a little dance gosh. and everything. She's like do walking it. around, do it now, this do it now. This podcast has gone rogue. People <laughs> are like, I'm not listening to no, this, this episode. No, this is good. This is good information. Okay. How do you manage interruptions during your day? Like, you know, there are people who are like, this is all great, guys. Yes, this is wonderful. I plan to do the laundry, but then I get a phone call that, you know, like my kid is sick and I have to go pick them up or my phone doesn't stop ringing because, you know, whatever. What, what, how do you all manage when you have a plan for that day and there's an interruption? How do you get back on track? How do you manage that interruption? I, I actually... I have a little bit of ADD, ADHD. I don't know what it is, but like I actually need some interruption. It helps me focus a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like Shayla always used to think it was weird. I would listen to music and write messages at the same time. Like, yeah, how do you right. listen to music and write like that? That, but for me, I need like that. Just makes me focus even more. So things going off, like it just makes me drill down. So for me personally, it's helpful. And I know that sounds weird. Um, uh, but I'm not, I also have realized that when I do, like a phone call comes, it'll take me 15 or 20 minutes to get back into that zone. Mm-hmm. So I've got to be, I've got to be aware that like, hey, if I'm in zone, I'm in zone. Like I need to just let things. I think, it, I think context matters. Like, you know, as a mom, right? You're going to get interruptions for your kid. You can't really avoid some of, some of those things. Mm-hmm. Um I think you can create environments where that, does, like, you can, let's say it's not your kids or whatever, you can turn off your phone, you can, you can tell people, um, you know, uh, about those things. I, I've typically, like, I remember 
Jen, when, when she first started, you know, she, she's, she's learning a lot. And so she was coming to me about a lot of things. And she and I just had a conversation. I said, Hey, let's set up a meeting twice a week. Just save all of your questions because I'm a person, you know, that if I I'll get off track really quick. So I had to even just set boundaries through conversations Mm -hmm. of being like, Hey, this, this is something that, you know, is valuable for me. And it's worked great for us now, like coming with preparation and in meetings and questions and things like that. Um, but I think sometimes you have to set boundaries, turn off your phone, like interruptions can start to become a, an excuse not to make progress mm-hmm. too. And I think it's, if everything's always like, well, I've been interrupted, interrupted. I think you're probably a person that's probably focusing on the urgent things rather than, than the important things. Yeah. You know? But I think that that's partly where when you have deadlines, yeah, it will force you to make decisions about those kind of things. Yeah. Um, and most people don't ever have those deadlines. I mean, that's for me, it's like, it's really easy. Sunday's coming, whether I like it or not, Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how many, like there's deaths, there's wedding, like there's all kinds of chaos that's happening all the time. So like, I get it. Like you're getting interrupted, but there's still something you have to accomplish. So you've got to be diligent in those things. Interruptions are really interesting too, because sometimes interruptions are actually like, it's something you need to pay attention to, you know, and and God is really doing something in that interruption where it seems like an inconvenience to us or a frustration to us. Like at the same point, you have to kind of lean into those things. But I I think the interruptions one is hard. Yeah. That's always a challenge for me because I'm like, wow, what if this person needs something? Exactly. Um, So that one's a, that's, that one's a tough one, Mm -hmm. but I guess it's like developing something where you're sure that you can get back on track. Yes. So maybe you boundaries. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons why I love early in the morning Mm -hmm. because nobody, nobody's calling you between six and eight. Yeah. Right. Nobody, nobody's texting you between that. Yeah. The interruptions are less. Most people, they they have, (laughs) there's like built in boundaries there for others before they, they Mm -hmm. get to you. So, so that I think that's part of the reason why that earlier works because you accomplish so much before anybody else is even really active. So that way, when everybody else gets active, you're like, oh, I, I'm, I'm ready for all this because I've already gotten my important work done. Now I can do, I can do the other things. Yeah, that's good. Any final words to somebody who's like, mm, any final words of advice about time management? Do we squeeze it all in? Some of it, most of it? I think so, for the most part. TJ, it looks like he has something. Listen, you, you have, everybody has the same amount of time. Yep. Time, a time is actually our most precious commodity. Yeah. So you, you can either waste it, spend it, or invest it. It's mm-hmm. good. So, so what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Are, are you wasting time? Like I, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going, we're, I'm just wasting time. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why would you ever just waste time? Yeah. Cause you're never going to get it back. You can spend it like you can you can choose or you can invest it. You can go, I'm going to put it into something that's going to have a return. Yeah. And so I, th- I think you have to look at your time differently mm-hmm. rather than it's just passing by. No, no, no. It's a limited commodity. And what's I'm the going intention? To, and what's the intention behind it? And how am I going to maximize it? And I think the way you maximize it is by investing it. Yep. Yeah, that's good. And I'll say one like kind of last thing. I think for you, for me, one of my pet peeves is when people say like, and sometimes I'm guilty of this, but I'm changing that is like, oh, I'm just too busy. Okay. We're all busy. Yep. You it's, I just choose not to prioritize that now Correct. because you have the same amount of time as everybody else. And the fact that ever, somebody else can do it and you can't doesn't mean that they're, it just means that they're prioritizing that over yeah. this yeah. and you're prioritizing yep. this over that. Yep. And so, and that goes for dumb things too, right? Like, oh, I don't watch a lot of TVs cause I choose not to prioritize right. that. That's good. But also, like, oh, I, I don't have time to uh, serve at church. I'm too busy. No, you just don't prioritize Correct. that. So I, I that's like a pet peeve for me because I'm like, everybody has the same amount of time. It's just and what we you do with it. where yep. we put the things yep. in our life. Yep. And we choose how to prioritize 100%. Those yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope this was helpful content. And we will see you all next week.